हेलो स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ क्लास इलेवेंथ आई एस सी आई एम जय श्री एंड आई एम हेयर टू हेल्प यू योर मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट इंग्लिश दिस इज द फर्स्ट पोएम ऑफ योर रैपसडी अभी सारा द ट्रिस्ट रिटन बाय रबींद्रनाथ टैगोर नाउ अ डेज आई एम सींग दैट मैनी टीचर्स आर यूजिंग हिंदी लैंग्वेज टू एक्सप्लेन योर इंग्लिश कोर्स बट माई पर्सनल एडवाइस टू यू दैट दिस मैथड विल डेफिनेटली नॉट हेल्प यू टू इम्प्रूव योर लैंग्वेज प्रोफिशियंसी our main motto is this should not only to score good marks but to improve your command over the language and better communications and this could be possible only when you will listen good and effective speakers in this language only and if you will follow my channel believe me in a very short span of time you will be able to get good marks and also could speak confidently okay come on let's begin with the poem This poem was written as you to as I told you that this poem was written by Rabindranath Tagore who was a Nobel laureate. Now abhisara is a Bengali word means tryst or tryst means a secret meeting. This poem was written in Bengali in 1899 by Rabindranath Tagore in the collection of poem called Katha o Kahani and he was the first no, uh, non-European to receive Nobel prize. Now let's begin with the about the poem. So I'm going to give you a main gist of the poem this is a story based on two characters upagupta and who was a buddhist monk lived in 300 bce as you know that ashoka was adopted buddhism so he was a disciple of buddhist during ashoka's time upagupta was a popular courtesan of his court and tagore adopted this story line in this poem with uh, some changes from buddhist literature This poem gives a glimpse of India's ancient culture which is based on spirituality and divine thoughts which are the foundation of Indian culture and society. So Upagupta who became an ascetic ascetic means a saint a monk. He met a girl whose name was Vasvadatta and who was a dancing girl. She was very beautiful and Vasvadatta was very proud of her beauty and fortune. So this poem is based in Mathura. The two meetings are taken here first in the month of August and the next in the April when these two characters meet again. Now I will start the line by line explanation of this poem. Now come to the first line. Upagupta the disciple of Buddha lay asleep in the dust by the city wall of Mathura. This is written in a very simple and a free verse. Free verse means it is the irregular not a continuous gaps are there so upagupta the disciple of buddha who was a follower of buddhism lay asleep he was lying in the dust by the city wall of mathura he was lying where beside mathura mathura is a place it's a place of krishna lord krishna now lamps were all out do- doors were all shut and stars were all hidden by the murky sky of august now by these lines you will clearly know that this was the night scene so the lamps were out there was no lamps were lit at the time that time you will see this is poem written at that time and there will no electricity so obviously those lamps lanterns were used to produce the lights in the streets so lamps were all out doors were all shut no doors were open there and the stars were all hidden by the murky sky of august murky means dark so it was the cloudy night all the stars were not visible because there there was a cloud and it was the month of august which is known for rainy season so this poem this time it describes the rainy season whose feet were those tinkling with anklets touching his breast of a sudden so upagupta was lying on the ground and all of a sudden someone's feet has touched his breast and he heard the sound of tinkling with anklets anklets what is anklets anklets is worn by the women's in her leg payal jise kehte hain so he has heard the sound of tinkling anklets all of a sudden and this by this sound and by the, by this touch he has awakened he woke up uh, startled in light from a woman's lamp fell on his forgiving eyes so he woke up startled means all of a sudden this shows there is a meaning that why he was in a very deep sleep and the person who is in a very deep sleep means he is 
uh, he is having a peaceful mind a person who is having a peaceful mind only he can be in a deep sleep so he was sleeping and all of a sudden these things startled he startled and awakened and the light from a woman's lamp fell and when he saw there was a light the woman was holding a lamp in her hand and that falls in his face when the light falls on his face it describes it gives the forgiving eyes means whose forgiving eyes the monks upa gupta's eyes were forgiving means he was not afraid of the act which was done by the woman this highlights the character of uh, upa gupta also which is filled with compassion and forgiveness because you know he was an ascetic a saint and ascetics and those people are supposed to away from anger lust and these worldly desires okay now see the next lines next para it was vasavadatta the dancing girl the upagupta had seen who was uh, in front of him she was a dancing girl and starred with jewels starred means he she was wearing lots of jewelry she was covered with jewelries clouded with a pale blue mantle pale blue mantle mantle is a cloak which she was wearing and it was a pale blue color so she was covered herself with a cloak drunk with the wine of her youth and see she was so proud this word means drunk with the wine of her youth means she was so proud of her youthfulness of her beauty she lowered a lamp and saw the young face austerely beautiful when she has lowered her lamp to see the face whom she has touched so what she has seen this was austerely beautiful means austerely means serious the face was very serious whose face was serious upa gupta's face was very serious but as he was also a very handsome and attractive personality so she has seen she was very impressed by the soberness and simplicity of the man forgive me young ascetic said the woman and then she cried to forgive her because she has disturbed him and she has touched by mistake graciously come to my house the dusty earth is not a fit bed for you and what she said she has invited him to her house and she said that this dusty earth is not a best place this is not a better place for you you come to how my house and i will i will give you a very warm welcome now you see these lines there is it uh, see the lines the starred with jewelers these lines express the metaphor okay these are the figure of a speech which i will go to explain at the last of the video also but in between the lines i am also explaining you that this is the metaphor as well as clouded with a pale blue mantle drunk with wine of a youth this is also an example of metaphor as well as imagery imagery is when by seeing the lines by listening the lines you have come to an image in front of you that the woman is standing with wearing the jewels with wearing a beautiful cloak over her body and uh, these things are the figure of a speech this are used here to make a beauty of the poem the young ascetic answered women go on your way so the upagupta he has replied that women go on your way means he has not made any interest even after saying such a beautiful girl so beautiful so uh, full filled with youth because he was a ascetic and he had no worldly pleasures okay so upagupta told vasavadatta to return to her house here the metaphorically means that you can uh, go and continue with whatever you are doing in your life i am not concerned with that okay so when the time is ripe i will come to you when the time is ripe means when the time will right when it will be a right time for you that i should come in your life then i will come suddenly the black knight showed its teeth in a flash of lightning so here it is also a figure of speech and you can say it is a idiom he used here that i will come suddenly the lightning struck with a flash of light in the dark sky here you will see personification figure of a speech is used here as if the black knight has shown its teeth okay now the storm growled from the corner of the sky and the women trembled in fear all of a sudden there was a growling sound of uh, growling sound of a storm 
okay so this is also a personification and the woman trembled out of the fear many a times you will see that the girls feel fear when there is a thundering in the sky they fear they get fear and they scream okay so this like of situation also there a year had not passed now this is the next stanza of the next you can say this is the continuity after some months okay almost the last the first paragraphs were about the august month when it was a rainy season and now it is the april season of the of just after the 8 months of the august so year had not yet passed means not a full year has passed it was evening a day in april in the spring now the month is described here april which is a spring season now you know that a spring season is very beautiful the many flowers bloom in this season it is full of greenery flowering season it is called so the branches of the wayside trees were full of blossoms blossoms means the beautiful flowers are blooming bahut sundar se phool khelte hain jaise basant ritu mein so the now the time comes of a spring season april and the story has shifted from august when it was a rainy season of lightning and thundering now the spring season is the season of blooming flowers so this is the revival of nature a new life this shows the renewal of energy so the cheerful melody of flute came floating in the warm spring air from far away and the citizens had gone to the woods for the festival of flowers and no citizens were there in the mathura why because they were gone there were some festival of flowers many a times you will see these festivals happen in your city also but they all happen in uh, spring season because this is a season of blooming flowers so many beautiful flowers nature provides us so similarly there was a festival of flowers in mathura and many citizens go there to see that festival to enjoy the festival now come to the para from the mid sky gazed the full moon on the shadows of the silent town now this time it was a full moon earlier it was darky means darky night there was no moon in the sky but this time it was a clear sky because it is a spring season and from the mid sky gazed gazed means looking the moon moon on the shadows of the silent town the young ascetic was walking in the lonely street now who was walking now the young ascetic upa gupta was walking on the street last time you know that upa gupta was lying and vasudevatta was walking but this time it is the totally different situation a contrary situation when the young ascetic upa gupta was walking on the street while over her head the love sick calls uttered from the mango branches their sleepless plaint now you what he had heard he had heard the voice of the coil the cuckoo bird you might have heard many a times the voice of coil coo coo as i also have a mango tree at the back of my house and every time every year when the beginning of summers the coil came and it uh, gives the voice coo coo it is very pleasant voice and many a times i also imitate its voice you will listen you you can also do this thing if you imitate its voice it will listen for some time and that it will start giving you answers replying you that okay i am here right so the same here while overhead the love sick quiz love sick quiz means as if it is welcoming or it is calling its partner okay the coil bird is calling its partner uttered from the mango branches their sleepless plaint Upa Gupta passed through the city gates and then Upa Gupta was walking he just now the passed through the city gates and stood at the base of the rampart at the side of the rampart means side of the road he was standing at the side of the road what woman lay at his feet in the shadow of the mango grove there he saw whom a woman who was lying there in the shadow of the mango grove mango tree where same the same tree where he had heard the voice of the cuckoo bird and at the base of that there was a woman lying struck with black pestilence her body spotted with the sores of a small pox now struck with black pestilence black pestilence is a disease 
it is a small pox small pox is a very contagious disease nowadays it is treatable also but at that time it was considered a very uh, deadly and very contagious disease even the pupil are not ready to take the name of the smallpox they were so scared and so afraid of this disease that they whenever this disease is spreads because it is a highly contagious disease and the pupil often marked with the often left with the marks of the chicken pox on their body so she was also having this disease she had been hurriedly driven away from the town and what the pupil did they had thrown her out of the town because she has been suffering from this disease chicken pox which is a very contagious disease and pupil warned that this disease should not spread to others so on account to just stop this disease from spreading she has been driven away outside the town to avoid her poisonous contagion now here we have reached to the last tense of the poem the ascetic sat by her side took her head on his knees upagupta whenever he when he saw the lady lying on the in such a miserable condition and she was suffering with chicken pox she was suffering with pain there was misery and all over the pain over her body all of a sudden upagupta he was uh, he sat there by her side and took her head on his knees and moistened her lips with water how he had helped him helped her he had moistened her lips with water because her lips were drying away and he smeared her body with balm because there was so much of pain and burning out of the disease so what he did he had a smeared a soothing balm so that it could soothe her body and it could reduce the a uh, little bit of pain who are you merciful one now this is asked the question asked by the vasavadatta because she has not recognized him because he, she was in such a pain and uh, might be she has forgotten the first tries the meeting of upagupta to upagupta who are very merciful one as the woman the time at last has come to visit you and i am here vasavadatta replied the young ascetic so upagupta replied that this is the time when i had come to visit you remember in the last meeting what he said that go away whatever you are doing you just go to your work and i will come when the time will ripe when the right time will come i will come to you she ha he has refused to the invitation of vasavadatta at that time when she was so rich so beautiful and everybody needed her at that time he had not shown any interest but this is the right time why because she has been deserted by her dear ones by her loved ones so love is not the true love is what true love is not that when you are young when you are having everything and the people are behind you but when you are in trouble situation when your youth has passed away because youth is not for always it will pass one day one day you will be left miserable and alone the person who will stand behind beside you at that time he will be the real lovers okay so here vasudatta replied the young ascetic now you see that upagupta had fulfilled his promise to vasavadatta when he had he set out during the spring season that symbolizes a period of transcendence from the life of materialism to a life of spiritualism okay so he now found vasavadatta lying on the dusty floor and where um, once she had she found him and had offered him a better bed at her home but upagupta has refused at that time but now the compassionate and merciful ascetic he had felt pity on her condition and now he has come to help her so vasavadatta was extremely grateful to him now let's discuss about the style and figure of a speech of the poem regarding the style of the poem this poem is written in a blank verse as you know blank verse means no perfect rhyming scheme is there this is a translation why because this is a translation of tagore's poem which was 
initially written in Bengali language. And if you will, uh, if you listen the Bengali version of this, this is beautifully rhyming. There is a perfect rhyming scheme in Tagore's poem. But as this is a translation in English, so there is no rhyming scheme you will find, and this is written in a blank verse. So the poem is narrative in the form and it because it tells a story. Yes, it is a story. It is a meeting between the two people. It contains all the elements of a fully developed story. As you uh, listen in the story, what uh, there are the characters are there, plot is there, okay, conflict is there. So everything, whatever you will find in a story, this is in the story. So it is taken as a narrative poem. Now, let us discuss the very important part of this figure of a speech. In between the poem also I have explained you, but now uh, very clearly I am giving you all the figure of a speeches. The first you will see the metaphors. Metaphors are in which the comparison between two different things are implied, but that is not clearly stated. Okay. The first is starred with jewels. Clouded with pale blue mantle, this is also an example of metaphor and teeth in a flash of lightning, these are the examples of metaphor. The second are personification, personification are which gives the human attributes, okay. So now the storm growled, here the storm growled, storm which is a uh, inhuman thing but it is growling. Trees were full of blossoms this is also an example of personification and gazed the full moon okay next is black night showed its teeth in a flash of lightning so how can a black cloud shows the teeth because teeth is used to have teeth is used to happen with uh, animals and human beings but here it is personified the black clouds lightning of light and thunder is personified by the teeth Next, the poet uh, is having extraordinary poem and this is using uh, the imagery to many of the imageries are used in this poem. The first see whose feet were those tinkling with anklets. So this is also creating an imagery. Next line the dancing girl starred with jewels, clouded with a pale blue mantle. These all gives an expression of imagery and bodies spotted with sores of small pox. Here you can see the alliteration is also there, source of a small pox, the repetition of S sound words. Like in the flowers, uh, in the lines, in the lines festival of flowers, this is also an example of alliteration and this shadows of silent town, this is also an example of alliteration. And yes, don't forget to subscribe my channel. And do comment whatever the problems you are facing you can ask me in the comment section. At the last of the video I am adding the questions according to your uh, examination point of view. Alright and uh, I have tried to make as much as many as questions which are which will be very helpful for your exams. I have given the answers there also and many MCQs I have added there. What you can do, you can just take out the printout of those papers because they all are just free for you people and uh, the second thing you can do that you just take a screenshot and practice, okay. I have tried to cover each and every questions which can be made by this poem. Alright students, now let us discuss about the theme of the poem. The theme could be the first theme which is visible here, the compassion and selflessness. As I will discuss that monk Ubagupta, he shows true love and compassion when he helps Vasvadatta and at that time when she needed. Even though she was sick with such a deadly and contagious disease as you know that everyone, even his loved, her loved ones had turned away and they had thrown her out of the city gate where she was lying on the street, Upagupta did not hesitate to help her at that time also. So this shows that he was very compassionate and selflessness. The second is true beauty, the second theme could be the true beauty. The poem symbolizes true beauty is far away from physical appearance. 
because you know that Uppa Gupta did not come with her when she had everything, money, wealth, youth and beauty and she had uh, invited Uppa Gupta to come at her place but Uppa Gupta had replied that he will not come at that time and he will come when the ripe, the time is right. Okay. So now this shows that Uppa Gupta uh, is not attracted by only the physical appearance. He had treated her with same compassion and kindness when she was in a desperate and miserable state, when she was lying ill. Now the third theme could be the spirituality and worldliness. Okay, so here Vasvadatta represents worldliness as she is proud of her beauty and wealth. On the other hand, Upagupta represents spirituality because he is not attracted by the glamour of this world. Rather, he follows spiritual path of service and compassion. So now you can see that I have made this video very clearly and with all the pictures it will be just like the movie you are seeing and whenever you are having a visual image in front of you the things will retain in your mind. Okay and at the last of the video you will find the questions. So do practice more and more and if you find any difficulty or any problem in the MCQs you can ask me in the comment section. Also ask me, you can ask me for the questions for the next videos, whatever you want. The answers of these MCQs I will give in my next poem that is why I like the hospital. Alright, by then you just practice and try to do the, give the answers on your own. Comment me if you like the content, this will also inspire me. Alright, so meet you very soon in the next video.